Speaking of uh, men, um, one question that I get a lot from uh, my listeners and from random DMs on Instagram mm-hmm. is uh, what is advice – advice from somebody like you who's experienced in this sexual world, what advice would you give to men on how to please a woman? Like, what do you find that men are often doing wrong? Um, I think that like something I may have noticed with, um, other performers that I've chatted about is just like, they maybe like aren't super confident. I think you have to be confident and believe in yourself. And then if you act that way, it's going to attract what you want, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't really have like super bad experiences where I'm like, oh no, like what is that guy doing? Maybe I have good taste. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe you just like a lot of different things. Yeah. No, I like a guy that can, like, take control and, um, like, knows what they're doing. But I usually go for guys that are kind of, like, more experienced. I I don't know, maybe a little bit of a good judge of character for what I like. That makes sense. You're attracted to men who um, maybe are a little bit more, like, domineering is not the right word. But, yeah, like, Like confident and experienced. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know what I would say, just be yourself. And, um, I think that's key because you're going to, if you act like you're something that you're not, then it's just fake and it's not going to work and just communicate, try things that you want to try. God, that's, uh, that just reminds me of a story (gasps) with an ex of mine who was British (sighs) And I generally like to be dominated in bed, or at least my younger self did. Now that I'm older, I'm not so much like that, but, and I communicated that to him and that just wasn't his personality. That just wasn't the kind of guy that he was. Right. And so I think he tried to do that and he called me, (sighs) what did he say? He called, he called me he's like, do you like that? You, you like you, 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 you saucy wench or something. Oh yeah. You're like, like, oh my God, no, please stop. (laughs) This is not the 1600s. You just called me a saucy wench. Yeah. Like something really cringy. So just, just go back to being yourself. Just call me a slutty little bitch. Look at this. Yeah. Slutty wench. What is that word? That's so funny. But it was. It was like him trying to be somebody that he wasn't. And I was just like, look, we're just not sexually compatible, which doesn't mean anything about like you as a man and your ability to please. It's just like, we're just not sexually compatible and you're going to be great for somebody else. Yeah. Someone a bit more like vanilla or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So your (laughs) advice would be to be yourself. And if what you're doing isn't right for the woman that you're with, then you're probably better suited to someone else. Yeah. Sounds a little bit harsh, but I think it might be the truth. (laughs) Hey man, sometimes the truth hurts. Yeah, it does. What about penis size? How important is that to you? Um, I would say it is important um to me but mostly I think a lot of girls say you know it's about how the guy uses it and his whole approach um that's for sure but um yeah it does it does matter but at the same time you don't have to have like a really huge dick like sometimes it's it's too much I don't know Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) would be so too much would be like like you if you were in a relationship with like with someone that had like a really really big dick it might be I don't know. It's not essential, I would say. You don't Mm -hmm. have to have that to please a woman. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm pretty versatile. Um, It's interesting because I had a like a neuroscientist um, on my podcast. I don't know if you listened to the episode, Dr. Nicole Prousey. Is it newer? Um, It's newer, yeah. Okay, maybe not. And she talked about, they did like a scientific study about penis size, right? Because men are just obsessed with this idea. They are. They really are. Yeah. But I guess it's understandable. You know what I mean? Like it's such a part of like culture. Like we talk about like, uh, like big dick energy, like a uh, small dick energy, like that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. I so, can imagine it would affect them a lot. Yeah. And it's one of those things that like you can't change. Mm-hmm. Like we can get like our boobs done. Yeah. You know we'll what put I mean? Makeup on, yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Guys are kind of stuck with what they got. So mm-hmm. like I understand that. But so anyways, what she did was she made um, molds of different size penises and they were all like different colors too. So there wouldn't be any bias. And she had women like kind of, you know, have these like mold penises and decide like what they, 
would like. And women actually tended to choose a smaller penis for boyfriend. Mm. For the boyfriend, they call it like the the boyfriend dick versus like a one night stand. So they Isn't would go. That interesting. Yeah, they were like, oh, okay, like this bigger size would be good for like a once in a while, like you know, treat. But like for an everyday like boyfriend penis, like that's actually I'm gonna go a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. Yeah, because yeah. you were saying like you were like an everyday penis. You're like you're not. It's yeah. It's not a. It's not essential. Yeah. Yeah. Another interesting thing, too, was that um, on a scale of, like, what women found important in men, um, the size of their penis was, like, at the bottom of that scale. Yeah. I like um, personality, personally. I think that's really important. And, like, yeah. someone that can make you laugh. Yeah. And then, I mean, because yeah. dick's not out 24-7. Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean. It's, it's important, but it's not. If it is, they might have a problem. Yeah. Might be a little much. That sounds like too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> so what kind of personality do you like then in men? Um, I like someone that's funny, easygoing, uh, not um, jealous. Obviously, that would not work well with me. Um, but yeah, just easygoing and funny and like willing to like do new things, like a little bit adventurous. Someone that can keep things exciting in all as- aspects of the relationship as well. I don't want to get bored. Um, have you found it challenging to date now that you're in the adult industry? Um, well, I've been very focused on work, but it is something that I have noticed. Not that I'm like trying to date at all, but it is more difficult, I would say for sure. It's like a huge, I wouldn't say setback, but it's like a barrier. Like so many people would not want to be with someone that is working in the porn industry, which I can understand. That's fine. Um, so it sucks for mm. them but I think um there's definitely people out there that do accept it like some people really they they might like that their partner does porn but yeah I guess that's why a lot of people date inside the industry as well because mm. we have like an understanding of each other and like that bond that no one really will ever understand yeah no that's true and I think also too when you've been on a porn set enough times you see how it really like can be a job And how, like, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a physical connection. One hopes there is, right? So that you have a good scene, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's, like, a a love, emotional connection. Yeah. I think it can also bring you closer to your partner because it's, like, if you have that support, it's just awesome. And then you have your own world. And, yeah, I think a lot of guys don't realize, oh, girls that it would actually make them want their partner more that's what I think anyway Mm, okay interesting so it's kind of like yeah because then finding somebody who accepts you for who you are would be even more valuable to you because that's harder to find right yeah in the industry yeah exactly are there any like couples in the industry that you look at and you think like that's like a good hmm (laughs) I don't I think there is. There's no one that comes to mind, but I'm sure there are people for sure. I'm trying to think of couples. Like Kieran Lee and his wife seem super cute. Yeah. That little family. They've been together for a long time. They actually, I remember they started dating um, right when I, when I was shoot. I remember when they first started dating. So I have kind of like a cute story about them. So uh. I was shooting Kirsten. Kirsten Price is Kieran's wife. Mm-hmm. Um, I was shooting solos of her. And I noticed that she was like super distracted and she like kept going to her phone to a point where I was kind of like, okay, girl, you got to put that phone down. Like we got to finish our yeah. shoot. And she was like, I know. She's like, I just started dating this new guy and I really like him. And I'm like <sighs> nervous because like we had a date last night and I'm not sure like how it went, but like I really like him. So da, 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 da. And then finally I was like, oh, so like who is this guy? And she's like, oh, his name's Kieran Lee. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I know Kieran. And I was like, all right, well, you know, hopefully like that'll work out. And then I was, t- I guess I was talking to Kieran like a couple of days later and I was like, yeah, so I work with like your, your new girl, Kirsten Price. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, like you're dating, right? He's like, oh, I didn't know she was officially my girlfriend. And I was uh-huh. like, well, I don't know. I mean, you guys were texting a lot that day. And he said that like after that, I think he like talked to her and he was like, oh, so I heard like Holly thinks we're dating. And then like, they kind of were like made it official. And you like, made them married. like actually, yeah, bond <laughs> together. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to take credit for their relationship or anything like that. Kieran will probably hear this and be like, bollocks, that never happened. Yeah. Well, probably. That's how I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's funny. <laughs> and it's it's great, too, because it really just shows that there's, like, 
a shoe for every foot, right? Because like, I'm sure, you know, we all love Kieran, but he's such a little fucker. <laughs> Do you is. know what I mean? Yeah, of course. He's so he mischievous. He's yeah. such a pain. In, he knows it. He loves it. That's his character. That's his character. And that's yeah. like what we love about him. But it's yeah. also like, it's a lot. So like the fact that he, you know, found this wonderful woman. To deal with him. To deal with him. Yeah. <laughs> It is just funny. goes to show they were truly meant to be together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's actually a really good example though. And they yeah. have like three kids together and, you know, and they have a, they have a really good life. So mm-hmm. I think they're a great proof that it can, yeah. it can happen. Do you know any other good couples? Um, I mean, I think Manuel and Caden. Oh yeah. You know, they've been together for yeah. a while. I do know that there's a lot of performers who have a significant other off screen that they just don't talk about. And I'm, I'm sure that, you know, yeah. people like that too. Yeah. Um, you know, and they just like, they, they have a solid relationship, but they just don't bring them into their workspace, which works for them. Yeah. Sometimes private is really good mm-hmm. too. Danny Daniels and her husband, Vix fucking perfect example. Yes. You know, Danny's a good friend of mine. I've known her for a long time. I was a bridesmaid at their wedding. Cute. And, um, yeah, I mean, they like absolutely very much in love. Yeah. Um, to the point it's kind of na- <laughs> nauseating. And I mean that affectionately, but, like you guys are so in love. It's gross. They're both romantically much. They're both super romantic. Yeah. That's probably why. Yeah. Mm. It's cute, but it's, it's, cute. it's just, it's cute. I'm not a very romantic person. So yeah, me neither. I'm just kind of like, and then. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh God. But yeah, bless yeah, them. Yeah, it's lovely to see people who like really vibe on that same level. So. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. And while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.